I'm very excited to be here. Um, thanks again to Seattle Aquarium, Zach, for the last minute help with the tripod. Um, so yeah, I'm Tony White. I'm an applications engineer at Blue Robotics. I help out in our support department, um, answer a lot of emails, but I also get to, get to test a lot of our systems and other people's products uh, and evaluate them. So it's quite a lot of fun. Uh, I've technically only been with the company for about six months, um, but I've been close with the whole team uh, kind of since the beginning. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, and hopefully you find my presentation here a good summary of why I think Blue Robotics occupies a unique space uh, in the marine uh, robotics uh, industry. Uh, it's about enabling folks like you guys to make things happen um, that maybe were difficult uh, to do on your own before uh, with off-the-shelf parts. Uh, and to me, commoditizing things like that, like enclosures and other uh, parts, have been enabled kind of a subtle uh, revolution in just how groups can uh, approach uh, solving these challenging uh, problems. Uh, so we'll go through who I am, um, we'll talk about uh, the Blow RV2 and what's new with it, uh, and we'll then dive into a bit on the Blue Boat, uh, which is my favorite of our newer products. Um, so way back in 2012, my origin story, so to speak, uh, I was in Louisiana uh, in a hydrographic survey company, and they had actually commissioned this CCAT2 cavalry, and you see, ooh, um, but without a propulsion system. And so same as Rusty, we were looking around and not finding anything and doing kooky tests in the pool, uh, trying to do belt drive and spraying water everywhere and having mowers burn out. Uh, meanwhile, the company was developing million dollar plus um, vessels. They're very large, diesel powered, um, and obviously out of reach uh, for most applications uh, that are not oil and gas. Um, not to mention um, those vehicles being very large and the technology being what it was at the time, um, it required a lot of software, a lot of custom um, aspects and integrations and a very large engineering team uh, to collect data and to make things happen. Um, so it's definitely not a single human scale uh, like a lot of our products uh, try to be now. Um, I left Louisiana and went to Los Angeles in the fall of 2013 uh, to work on some more robotics. Uh, it was shortly after arriving that I got to meet Rusty and Elisa. Uh, it was definitely a case about uh, being in the right place at the right time. Um, I was an early customer for the M100 motor and helped develop a Celsius, uh, we call it, fast response temperature sensor that we still sell. Um, and this was all enabled and helped by having board meetings with Rusty on the weekends. Um, so these were the data divers. Um, they were surface swarming vehicles that could dive vertically and profile uh, the water column. And uh, after having many adventures with those in the Blue ROV2, uh, I moved on to Hawaii, uh, where I entered the mariculture industry. Um, there we use the Blue Robotics components of enclosures and cameras uh, to build over 50 underwater cameras to observe our fish farms. Uh, able to tune in, um, I thought it was the best thing on TV, uh, to be able to wake up and check out the fish we're doing. Um, we also, uh, I think, had the first resident uh, ROV, meaning the ROV lived in the aquaculture pen 24-7. And you can see it there next to its dock. Um, this had a box on the bottom of it with an extra thruster. And with that, you could collect dead fish and move them uh, to an area and eject them from the pen. Um, so it was really cool to wake up in the morning, turn on the ROV, drive around, find a, find a whale shark, find a rope that might have come untied, let the guys know, hey, we should put that back on there, and also tell the tour boat companies there's a whale shark out there. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'm going to um, go ahead, enough about me. Um, let's go ahead and dive into uh, the Blue RV2. Um, you can see it there in a plane rack at 120 feet, and here on the right, it's fitted with our newest 5-inch uh, enclosure and dome. Uh, it has a Lumix camera in there. Uh, we, you might have seen, some of you might be familiar, we have a guide on integrating the Lumix camera. That was previously done with a very expensive housing, uh, but now it happens to fit in, in our own enclosure. So I'm updating our materials on that, and hope to share that kind of information soon. Um, so, for those of you that may not be aware, which may not be many in this room, uh, the Blue RV2 was launched in June of 2016. Uh, we're currently on kind of our fourth hardware revision of it. Um, it ranges five to seven thousand dollars, depending on how you configure it. And we've actually shipped over 4,500 units in the world, so we think it's one of the most popular uh, ROV platforms in the world. Um, the biggest changes in the time I've used the platform over the years has definitely been software. We'll dive into that uh, in a moment. Um, but in recent uh, months, in the uh, past year, we've launched a lot of useful accessories. Uh, I think my three favorite are the Ethernet switch, which fits right over um, the existing hardware and gives you a few extra Ethernet ports in your uh, vehicle. 
Uh, the roof rack, which is a great way to mount things to the top of it, and the sediment sampler. Uh, a lot of applications need to collect a little dirt or rocks off the bottom. Um, these pictures are kind of fun at the top. The top center uh, is the one of the original uh, blue ROV2. This was uh, before we shipped a single one and the thrusters are mounted in kind of a weird spot. Um, this one is a, the first heavy, the first time we mounted the thrusters onto it. Uh, two of them were actually clear from a special Kickstarter. Um, and this one was actually unique because it was lost off the coast of LA, drifted around in the ocean for two years, and was recovered in Mexico. Uh, found its way by happenstance uh, back to our facilities. We were so excited to get it back. We gave the folks a free ROV and you can still see this in our uh, lobby there today. Um, and it was still dried on the inside. And the electronics were damaged. Um, and then finally, uh, Brian Hoover, our own, you might meet him later. Um, he, it, he once was testing in Florida, and I love this, this uh, GIF. Um, it shows that the battery can fall out of your little RV too, and you can still be driving it around. <laughs> <laughs> Wondering why it's pointed up more than usual. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, this battery was not the safest battery afterwards, and we properly disposed of it, uh, but it just shows those like the wrap pretty tight. <laughs> Um, so what's new with Blue RV2 software? Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, Blue OS uh, is the operating system that runs on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and our software engineers have been really working hard to make this uh, as accessible and extensible a platform as they can. Um, so besides all the default functions, uh, there are plugins, extensions we call them. Uh, this includes Sonar View and uh, Ping Viewer, uh, like things that give more functionality to the ROV. Um, the newest one of those, um, or the ones that we're working on the most, is Cockpit. It's a ground control uh, software you can see in the upper left here. Um, so this replaces a lot of the functionality of Q Ground Control. That's a drone control program that we currently use uh, to control our vehicles. Uh, the advantages of this are, there's many of them, but uh, it runs in your web browser, so you don't need to install anything. Um, the video can work a little bit better, and it's a lot easier to develop for. So these widgets, you can drag around, you can move, you can make your own custom widget to show <coughs> sensor readouts. You can embed iframes, so if you have a web page that's showing you sonar information, you can have that alongside your camera view. And if you have more than one camera, you can have picture in picture and be able to monitor those without having to flip between windows because it's hard to use a mouse on a boat sometimes. <laughs> um, on the beta side of uh, the RDU cell firmware, um, we've got Surface Track, uh, Flight Mode, Clyde McQueen, well, Clyde McQueen, excuse me, We'll be presenting on that uh, a little later this morning, and uh, that's really exciting uh, what that enables. Um, it's possible to use with QGround control, but a bit tricky at the moment. Uh, we'll get into that. Um, and then there's a lot of new navigational sensors that have existed for a while that are getting much uh, higher performance and easier to integrate with the system. Um, and in terms of extensions, uh, some of you might have heard of Node Red. This is a great thing for student teams who maybe aren't familiar with coding or to do something visually to do something like integrate a water quality sans data, bring that data in over serial, do things with it, uh, forward it to the user, log it, etc. cetera. Um, custom extensions are easy to write, especially living in the age of a large language module model in uh, AI. And um, our Navigator Web Assistant uh, allows you to do low level access to the autopilot hardware. And that's been used uh, for people that don't want to necessarily use RD Pilot or RD Sub Rover. Um, and some folks at MIT have even made a swarm of EUVs uh, that uses that um, extension to for its control. Um, just one other uh, thing keep this large pipe uh, next to the ROV in mind. We'll revisit it in a later slide. Um, so, the Blue Boat, um, my favorite new vehicle product, uh, we launched in the fall of last year. Since then, we've shipped over 250 units. Um, for me, this vehicle is a game changer. Uh, it was in development for a majority of the company's history since 2017, in fact. And um, it's, it's really a robust pickup truck of the Big Ocean Blue, Big Open Blue. Um, it's one person portable. It's pretty easy to throw on your shoulder and carry around or scale down the clip, as we were doing earlier this week. And uh, comparing it to the Cabran I showed from 2012, uh, that orange CCAT 2, to me, it's like comparing a Model T to a modern hour automobile. Um, just works, and it's incredibly efficient. Um, so when I use a blue boat, uh, typically I wanted to go over what that rhythm and experience is like for me because it's a lot different than an ROV. Uh, I'll pull up to the coast uh, there in Cone of Hawaii and uh, open Zero Tier, which is like a VPN-like um, app on my phone and pair a Bluetooth controller to it. Uh, I'll launch uh, the boat once it's all connected and the motors are tested and navigate just a little bit offshore 
um, push a button for loiter mode uh, so that it will hold in one position and I can go about getting my other equipment set up. Um, we set up a base station that uses Wi-Fi uh, with a directional antenna uh, that can give you about a kilometer of range, uh, high bandwidth, and um, that lets you view the sonar data a little bit without using up your data plan. Um, I'll plan the mission, I'll adjust the sonar settings and send it on its merry way. At that point, I usually shut the laptop, turn off the phone, check on it occasionally, and stay in the general area as the vehicle mows the lawn, going back and forth. Um, to me, it's, it's a great way to spend an afternoon at the office. Uh, I can catch up with some other emails. Uh, I like to stay in the area just because boats are often curious what this flag is. Is it someone needing rescue? Uh, I've had people try to pull it out of the ocean or almost hit it, so standing on shore and waving <laughs> can sometimes dissuade them. Um, it's also often Murphy's Law, if you bring along some flippers or a uh, stand-up paddleboard, nothing will go wrong and you won't need to retrieve the vehicle. Uh, once the mission and the data are all co collected, uh, I drive the boat back to shore. Um, a gaff hook with a dull tip can make pulling it up uh, the rocks, um, or cliff as it were, uh, much easier. And um, download the data, repeat. <laughs> um, so in terms of sonars, uh, to talk about what's possible, um, so we have our basic single, sim uh, our basic ping two, which is a single beam sonar. Um, I developed my first extension, my first piece of public facing software, uh, the simple ping uh, survey extension and it lets you log that depth data on board the vehicle. Uh, so even if you're out of radio range, you still are collecting data. Um, it gives you a visual indication of how big of a swath your single beam data is covering. So you can see as it gets deeper, you're measuring a much wider area. Um, and it's a lot of fun and should be possible for folks with other sensors or things they want to add on to fork that uh, extension and add a little bit of code uh, to make whatever their application is happen. Um, a very advanced extension is Cerulean Sonar's uh, Sonar View. It's used with their sonar products, including the Cerulean OmniScan. Um, and some of you might have seen our fun, entertaining uh, launch video where we went to the Salton Sea and um, mapped a plane wreck there, uh, actually crossed from one side of the Salton Sea to the other. So that was a pretty fun adventure. Uh, and it's truly a great uh, sonar for finding objects and differences in bottom types. So sand versus seagrass, um, it might be a particularly relevant application. Um, so there's a new product from uh, Cerulean Sonar coming soon. I have one here if anyone would like to take a look at it later. Uh, it is a multi-beam sonar. It is kind of the third type of sonar that's commonly used in our geographic survey besides single beam and side scan. Um, you can see it here mounted on the underside of the vehicle. Um, and it gives you point cloud data so that um, this structure we saw earlier uh, actually shows up uh, on the map here and the top of it's at about 60 70 feet and the bottom is just around 100 um, so the actual books at Surly were surprised to be able to get such a clear image uh, at that depth range uh, as you're driving along sonar view gives you this point cloud uh, kind of feedback and you can watch the data come in it's quite a lot of fun um, but what else is new so uh, in early development um, We've got a solar panel, um, and we can look at a few different ones, uh, finding the one that can be waterproof the best and give you the most power on such a small platform. Um, but the big problem besides power is often flipping over, uh, depending on the sea states. We try to send our solar turtle, a successor to Rusty's original solar surfer, um, out across the Pacific, and it got a few hundred miles offshore and flipped over in some pretty big seas. So I believe we now have an example of the world's first um, self-riding catamaran. We've got our T500 thruster on the back on an arm and when you flip it over a Lua script which is something in um, Blue OS and uh, RV Pilot that lets you script uh, simple actions very easily. It detects that the vehicle is turned upside down, runs that motor until it's upright and you can continue on your merry way. <laughs> um, beyond that we're hoping soon to launch directional antenna hardware as well as a cell modem uh, again for that stress-free operation along coastal regions. Um, and an RTK GPS for those that demand really fine positional data. Uh, passive acoustic monitoring with hydrophones is a big application we get a lot of questions about. Um, we're currently evaluating AC Biotics hydrophone uh, that should integrate with our platforms easily. And my favorite, because I've worked with uh, flow through cytometers before, uh, is the planktoscope. So this is comparable to a Woods Hole instrument that cost almost a million dollars six years ago. Um, but as you see, it's just a Raspberry Pi and a flow through microscope. And with this, you can collect hundreds or thousands of pictures of phytoplankton uh, in an area. The software automatically crops and 
um, identifies all the small ones, you upload that data to a website, EcoTaxa, and you get a report on kind of the biomen area. So I'm excited to see what uh, research opportunities that might open up. Uh, I'll wrap up um, with uh, just a, some fun cost customer spotlights at what Blue Boat's been doing out there in the world. Um, these folks in Germany win the Everything But the Kitchen Sink Award. <laughs> uh, they've added some buoyancy, they've added some water quality uh, sons, um, and some weather stations, and I believe they said they have a couple sonars on the underside as well. Um, down here in the bottom left, um, some folks in the Bahamas have modified theirs to carry an eDNA sampler system, so this has many channels. Uh, similar to the planktoscope that can pump a little bit of water in and uh, funnel it and process uh, the environmental DNA that might be present. These folks also augmented their buoyancy, but they did so uh, with one of our payload brackets and some buoyancy mounted to that, which I thought was a pretty elegant solution. Um, this is our friends over at PicoTech. Um, they have their own multi-beam that they've been testing. Uh, it's a bit higher resolution in performance and cost than this ruling option, but it's still a really cool sensor. Uh, and they also have a RTK GPS uh, fitted here uh, for maximum accuracy. And then home with me uh, in Kona, uh, over six times now, I've helped the local sailing club uh, with an extra blue boat. We use it to, as a tugboat to keep the uh, race course marker in place. Um, this was a big challenge in the past because it gets so deep so quickly that you know dealing with four or five hundred meters of rope uh, and then an anchor on the bottom that you don't know if you're dropping it on coral or that you're going to get that piece of cement back not the greatest thing for the environment so this makes it a lot more convenient and uh, a lot easier to, to manage um, so in kind of wrapping things up um, I really feel like your imagination is hardly the limit and we're here to help you as much as we can please reach out to us in the support inbox um, we'd love to hear about your application and how we might be able to help. Um, and I'm going to be emceeing and introducing speakers as we move forward from here. Uh, so thanks again for your attention and we'll move on to the next one. <laughs>